Welcome back to the SPL, everybody. Agro joined by Mifflin to bring you the final set of our first day of the SPL here in week number four. It's going to be Obey up against Space Station. And Mif, obviously the talk of the town about Obey Alliance right now. The news that we can let out on stream last night that he is at the twilight of his competitive career, at least for this season. He says he's not willing to say he's retired quite yet, but he is going to be stepping away pretty shortly how do you think that impacts Obey Alliance in, in these last few games where they do have him? It can't be a good feeling knowing that the guy you're playing with in this incredibly high tier set, especially considering they're playing against SSG, who's in that upper echelon of the SPL, having to play with a guy you know who's not going to be around for much longer, it probably takes the wind out of your sails a little bit. But that being said, maybe it puts a little fire under Weekend. He's got that internal youth burning, kind of like Guy Sensei, where he wants to prove himself in that last little farewell to the SPL. We might see a different beast today. Ah, the springtime of youth, of course. That's what we're all looking for. And Obey could use it, because they are sitting winless so far at 0-4. And, and you mentioned SSG being part of that upper echelon, but I don't know that they've really showed it quite yet. They're sitting at 2-2. Two right now in those standings, fifth overall. I think this is the big test week for them because they go up against Obey today and then E United on Sunday. What have you seen from Space Station that, that might explain their struggles? It's that they really lack a true identity. They have these fantastic tools. Dardes, they've got Raffer, they've got all these guys that are incredibly talented. Cherio has been showing a fantastic performance throughout the jungle, picking gods that are very standard, like Thor. They have all these fantastic tools, they just haven't been able to transition it very well. They get these early leads that fizzles out, they get these late game huge leads, they fizzle out as well. They haven't been able to truly get the, the lead and run with it as they have. I think once they really figure out how to play around their their core two members, which for my money is Vote and Dardes, that's when we're going to see them really start to step up their game. Right now it seems like, and it's it's weird to say it, it seems like they play mainly through Raffer, and that's your support. Yeah, Raffer is usually the guy who's, who's making things happen around the map, and the, and the back line has struggled at times for SSG. But I, I do feel like Dardes, to his credit, has kind of delivered as advertised. He's played this Aphrodite where he's looked incredible. He's, he's played a couple different gods in that mid lane that have looked pretty strong. Vote has been, has been my main concern. Jo the, the new man on this roster, the only change that SSG made since last year. Do you think that the new team environment can, can be a part of those struggles? I think it certainly can be, especially when you're going into a team that has these huge historic bonds where you have these guys who are so established in the scene. Vote, I don't think, is going to have the opportunity to really branch out and try and make his own identity in the squad. He really is just filling in a slot. When you're playing under Raffer's squad, you play under Raffer's rule, and I think that's reflecting a little bit in Vote's play. Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle for him in that duo lane at times, but we know that the, the potential is there. For vote. I mean, the dude had one of the best runs through season four on that rival squad. This is a talented guy, and I had a chance to sit down and talk with him a little bit earlier today about how he's fitting in with the SSG boys. We got vote coming in for the ADC for Space Station. Uh, vote, look, man, we can be honest with one another here. Hasn't been the hottest start for you guys here so far. What has been going on with your team? Do you guys feel like you've been underperforming? Uh, definitely, yeah. The scrims are suboptimal. I'm kind of just in team most of the time. I'm having a go through a rough patch, and I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting to come above it. I think it's kind of like it's confidence for the rest of the league. Yeah, con confidence always an important part of, of what you guys are going to be doing out there. But this is going to be a matchup where you should be pretty favored. Obey Alliance has struggled so far are you feeling confident in this matchup that you've got today oh uh, yeah for sure i mean going against the bomb team you also have some confidence right but you can't really you can't be overconfident as a thing so it's going to go in we expect to win but we expect it to not be a stomp is, is this team environment what you expected coming in i mean you're the only new member to the space station team and this renegades team was obviously a very successful one last year I know you've been pretty close with these guys, you know, behind the scenes and that kind of stuff, but what's it been like trying to adjust to this to this roster? Uh, it's 
com- it's not it's not as serious as I thought. I, 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 never, I never thought it'd be serious, like scrims and stuff. But it's just not as serious as I. Th- like, I thought it'd be like a little bit serious, but it's like not even that. It's just complete trolls all the time. That's like the yeah, hardest I mean- part. Yeah, you, you'd think that, okay, they're just trolling right now, but they're going to get serious when it comes to yeah, time yeah. the game. But you're saying it's it's just trolling 24-7 with these fellas? Just trolls all the time, yeah. Cherry's eating what are you supposed to do? I mean, Cherry's eating my ice know? cream, Raffles eating my Pringles. <laughs> Cherry's eating all the donuts, it's nothing to go, nothing to do, nothing to eat. I'm just starving. Man, good luck, Vo, dur- especially during this time, man. I hope that your Pringles and your donuts stay safe, and I hope you do well again today against Obey Alliance. Good luck, man. Thank you. Man, nothing worse than that. You want to talk about team dynamics. Mifflin, you know, it, it, let's say the casting team were a team. Love all the fellas. But on God, if someone touches my Pringles, there's going to be problems. You know, Vote is a saint for his, his Pringles, his ice cream, and his donuts getting stolen all at the same time. What's that about, dude? Uh, there's nothing he can do about it. You heard the man. He's literally starving. I think he identified the issue with SSG. The boys are trolling and they're bullying him. He can't even eat. Raffer ruling with a, a, a tyrannical fist. It seems a bit crazy here. But there is confidence. He said it. He said, the second we stop trolling, we're going to look like a way better squad. Maybe he gets some Pringles in his tummy. He's going to look pretty good. <laughs> I like the, the negotiation technique here by vote. If I'm not being fed in real life because you're eating all my food, I will be doing the feeding in-game to make sure that he punishes them accordingly. And maybe Obey Alliance can be on the receiving end of some of that. And today is going to be a big test for them because last week they did make the first marked steps towards improvement. The first few weeks, they, they frankly were not looking very competitive. But I thought last week, if they turned it around, and look significantly better. And I think a lot of that's due to the fact that Bobby had a lot better of an early game last week than we've seen weeks prior. Weeks one and two, if you were watching Obey sets, you could very easily bet money that inbound was going to be the first flood target. And right now it's seeming like he's playing a little bit more re- resigned, a little bit less uh, into mode, if you would. And he's playing a lot more around his team. It seems like that's reflecting in Wowie's play as well. We're seeing him do a lot better now that he's not having to worry about inbound nearly as much. Ducky has been a consistent factor for Obey. I think he's the one constant in every single one of their sets where he's performing at Ducky level no matter what. The, uh, Obey has flashes of brilliance every so often. Uh, it's just whether or not they lose all that momentum with, at the same time as they lose their jungler is going to be the question. It's going to be tough, man, because you, you have the new support coming in. That's obviously a huge key for any team. You, you heard a lot of United talking about that following their set that we just saw. And now you're, you're, you're talking about you, – we just got used to having this 3v3 in mid with inbound Wolfie and Weekend. And now Weekend, as we've discussed, not done quite yet, but entering his final sets as an SPL player for this year. So I, I think that Obey – is going to have to start leaning on those side lanes a little bit. Because I agree. I think both Wowie and Ducky have had bright moments. I think Wolfie has performed better than I expected coming in and returning to competitive play. I think he's had a couple of pretty strong sets there for them in the mid lane. And if inbound can get more comfortable, you never know. I just feel like Obey still needs to find their identity, though. You know, they've got to find their brand of smite. In Season 7, it isn't good enough showing up and being like, yeah, we're going to out smite game them you know that just doesn't work these days and ducky i think uh, talks a little bit about that when i talked to him earlier on today have a watch all right we've got ducky solo laner for obey alliance jamie i know this hasn't been uh, the start to the year that you guys were hoping for but i think that we saw some market improvement from you guys last week was the team feeling the same way uh yeah we were obviously not happy because we lost again but uh, we are slowly getting there. It's an improvement from the PK set. That's uh, that's for sure. So hopefully today we can get a get a cheeky little W. I mean, is there is there such a thing as a moral victory for you guys at this point? Do you did you feel any better a- after that, or is is a win all that really matters to you guys now? Oh no, a loss is still a loss. Like obviously you don't want to keep losing. That's never fun. It really drains you mentally, especially in quarantine. Like I can't go anywhere. I just have to sit in this house, look at my PC and think, wow, I lost there again. 
unfortunate. So hopefully um, a win really means a lot for us, so we can get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say I, Hey, man, I feel you. I do. Quarantine's making us all go a little bit crazy, and I know that all that pressure mounting certainly doesn't help. But today you're up against Space Station Gaming, a team that on paper it was supposed to be one of the best in the league, but has not really looked the part of that quite yet. What have you seen from them as a whole, and what makes you think that, that they can be the team that you beat? Uh, I think they have really good team play from what I've seen, especially when like Nika and Rafa are both on Guardians or CC Heavy Gods because they seem to set up the back line really well. So hopefully, if we put those behind early, we can look for easier picks on them when they're going to engage, because usually they're like double front line. So if we pick them at the start of the fight, the back line should be easy to get to. Nika's a player that you probably have some pretty good experience against, being from EU as he is. But I think that, that he's looked pretty solid so far this year in the solo lane. Do you agree with that? What have you seen from Nika in particular so far? Yeah, Nika's looked insane. Uh, I think he's very good on the, like I said, the Guardians. I think anything with CC, with their team fight heavy or orientated team, I think he kind of leads the fights very well. In lane, well, he looking... doesn't even he doesn't lose. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. In You're lane, more important. Please go. Yeah, uh, in lane, I've never really seen him lose lane. It's usually like win or even, and coming into team fights like that is kind of brilliant. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the 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 big Yorm contest. You guys both seem to love <laughs> Yorm and Gander. So first pick Yorm on the menu, I'm sure. Ducky, good luck today, man. And here's hoping you find that first win. All right, thank you very much. Hopefully my team wakes up in time. <laughs> well, hopefully Obey is up and ready to go, as Ducky said there at the very end. L look, Miff, I mean, th this, this team has a lot of pieces. I just think that... I don't know that just having those pieces right now is enough with how good teams are in the SPL these days. They do have a lot of pieces, and it's usually on the back of the leader to direct the pieces, direct those chess pieces in a cohesive way. And I think a lot of the issue that's coming from Obey right now is that they gave leadership to Bobby, if uh, we're to believe the weekend interview last week. He's a newer player to the league, first time on PC. He's really only got his console experience, uh, experience to back him up. Maybe he hasn't been able to adjust quite as well. But that growth period, the, the growth from Bobby as a leader, I think can be tracked throughout the weeks. And that's why we're starting to see market improvement. And it's always good to hear from Ducky, such a charismatic guy. And it seems like he's confident going forward as well. Yeah, I love talking to Ducky, though. I wish someone from Obey would wake up early enough for me to talk to them instead. I feel like it's always Ducky that's got to come in and do the interviews, though he always nails them, so can't be too upset about it. Into picks and bans we go. Obey in that first pick position, and Yorm was what Ducky and I were talking about. Both he and Nika seem to love this selection, and it's just one of those picks that you, you don't feel like you give up too much when you first pick it. I mean, yes, there are gods that do better against Yorm, but it's Yorm. Like, you're just not dying in lane with that god pretty much ever. Yeah, what did we coin it? Uh, Sun Wukong Plus, he's able to survive very easily. He's not going to lose his lane. But Yorm does bring a certain level of backline dive, a certain level of survivability that Sun Wukong can't match. And it's incredibly potent. That level of safety, very nice from both of these squads, especially for SSG. I think it favors them a little bit more. Ducky being one of the most consistent players for Obey, I'd like to see him on a god that can get involved in these team fights a little bit more, that can dictate the pace of the match. Whereas Nika has these fantastic uh, G Goliath-esque players on his squad. He's got Raffer, Dardes, Vote, all these guys that he can rely on, Cherio. He can kind of hold his own in lane and then rotate in and be a facilitator, whereas I think Obey really needs Ducky to step up and play as one of the leaders for the squad. Interesting couple respect bands here by Obey, Aphrodite and Kuzenbo. Those are two selections that Space Station has shown some propensity to go to pretty frequently so far for the, through the first three weeks. Kuzenbo is one that, okay, I'm a, that that's, feels like the throwaway band in that first slot. But Aphrodite against someone who's proven that he can carry games with it, Dardes, I think, is going to see a lot of Afro bands in the future. 
I mean, letting Dardes Afro through can be only classified as a misplay after the performance that we saw last week. So I agree with the bands here. Taking away Raffer's comfort pick in this Kuzumbo, I agree. It's a little bit of a throwaway band. Yes, Kuzumbo scales incredibly well in a late game. He's able to play in your face on enemy mages as much as he wants. One of the few gods in the game that's literally going to punish you for landing your skill shots on him. Incredibly frustrating to play against. But with these bans, they're leaving a lot of these priority picks open. Persephone is yet to be banned. Hell is still available. SSG, go ahead and ban out Odin, which means that Hell is looking even more appetizing going forward. Yeah, Darda is usually not the Hell player necessarily, but maybe he's, he's liked what he's seen from the healers and might decide to go that way. Morrigan banned away, and it is worth noting that, that both her and Loki are now available on patch 7.4. So that is a pick that you should expect to see a little bit. Moving forward in picks and bans is inbound loses access to that Hercules. So Yorm is open here for Obey, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's where they want to go. Kamazot's also open, but I don't know if... Is that the type of carry god you want to give over to Ducky, a la the conversation you had earlier? I think Kamazots can certainly do it. He brings that high damage potential. He's got fantastic rotation potential. But it seems like it's going to be a Sobek. I'd be surprised if we don't see that come out of the solo. And I know you, in particular, are a huge fan of this pick. Yeah, it's just unmatchable in terms of late game presence out of that solo lane. You get to late game a lot faster than you would have in support. And you can afford to build a little bit more damage in there. Sobek just solos carries. He initiates every team fight. He does everything that you need him to do. And he's very, very difficult to kill in the process. But that does leave open the Jormungandr that might match that in that solo lane. I do think it is a flex pick, by the way. We've seen a lot of teams still put it, that Sobek in support. I don't know if that's inbound style, necessarily, because it isn't as early game as I think that a lot of his gods that he likes to play are, but maybe that's the direction Obey want to go and give Ducky something like Kamazots, which is now still open. And the inbound does need to develop a new style. When Odin and Hercules are taken, we've seen them fall back on the Fenrir. And that has been shut down very efficiently. I think inbound, once he figures out how to play a support that isn't more Smork-focused, we're going to see a lot more success out of Obey. Having Ducky play the Sobek, which is, I'm assuming is where that's going, is interesting. He's going to be able to farm up into the late game. He's not going to have to worry about getting bullied out too much, as he is going to be laying against Jormungandr, more likely than not. He's going to be able to rotate out and, as you said, be a huge facilitation tool for the rest of his squad. So we're going to need to see a lot of damage come out. It looks like we will as Raijin and Uller are picked up. Horus still available, and that's a guy that Raffer really, really likes. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take that in this third slot. I like Obey going with their backline and solidifying that with a whole lot of damage and, and pretty good crowd control on top. So now it's up to Space Station to see where they want to go. Raffer also has one of the most storied Kepris and Gebs in the league. So if they want to go with something a little bit more defensive, SSG has that option. But Athena is what they're hovering. And Athena's pretty potent here for Space Station because this is a straight up flex pick. It can go to Raffer, but I almost think it's it's safer to assume that this is going to Cherio in the jungle. A lover of Guardians in the jungle and a great setup god for this Merlin in the 3v3. For my money, Athena's Taunt is the best non-ultimate ability in the game. It's free setup. If it does go into the jungle, it's very easy to slot a lot of CDR into this Athena. And her damage is incredibly good as well. With the global pressure coming out, it's going to be very nice for her to pressure out maybe even solo lane and then rotate over to the duo lane if the enemy obey decide to go towards gold fury. So there's a lot of potential there. I would prefer to see it in support. As Obey pointed out, they're looking to shut down those frontliners. Uh having Athena be your frontliner. That dash is going to be very hard to shut down. The global is going to be a very good escape path, and it's going to facilitate the rest of the carries incredibly well. I would prefer to see SSG pick something more uh, in line with standard assassin jungles, as Cherio's been having a fantastic season so far. I mean, Hunbats and Thor, two of the most banned gods against SSG in particular, as you can see on your UI, so no one of those will be open unless SSG and Obey decide to trade bans on assassins in this matchup, which certainly is a possibility right now. But I love the Horus ban from Obey. We saw how potent this god can be in, in the right player's hands, and I think it's safe to say that Raffer is the right style for that support warrior. So now SSG do decide to take Kamazots off the board pretty late in this draft, but still, they get it out of there just in case. So now things like Sir Ket are open. 
that both weekend and inbound play pretty well. That could be a pretty solid flex pick. SSG has also prioritized that circuit for Cherio, so wouldn't be surprised to see that pick go in the in the bottom four here. That on her ban is interesting to me. I, I wouldn't associate that with SSG. That's not a pick that I really imagine they pick very often, especially considering Hu Yi is mm. still available, Jing Wei is still available. We have these huge priority ADCs that could still be picked up. Loki being hovered by SSG, kind of no love chance. it. Not, not even touching it. No, no chance. We're getting trolled. I'm not, I'm not having it. I, I actually think this on her ban is very smart because it isn't for vote. That they're banning that away. It's in case they want to put Merlin over to vote and give on her to Dardes, who tore up the entire SPL all of last year with that on her in the mid lane. Bit of a, a different angle of attack here from Obey, and I think that's actually a very intelligent ban by them. As SSG go kind of where you expect towards that Thor, and that's going to be for Cherio more likely than not in that jungle, adding extra global pressure to an already very strong CC heavy draft. It's going to be very easy for Merlin to find consistent damage with all the CC coming out. They're not sacrificing any dive as they do have the Jormungandr. Obey picking up Pele in return. I like that. It's going to be very easy for her to get into the back line. If the entirety of SSG's comp is going to be focused towards diving, Thor's going to dunk the back line. Athena's going to dash in for the taunt. Jormungandr is going to be doing World Serpent stuff somewhere. Pele can have a very easy time using Volcanic Eruption to find this Merlin in the back. And Terra there, so a little bit of ambiguity between these Guardians. Probably Terra support Sobek solo, but those could always be flipped. I don't know though, Mif. I mean, as a jungler, I feel like against a, a team that has Athena, you need someone that's going to kill the enemy backline before Defender of Olympus ever matters. Does Pele really fit that bill? I don't know that she does. With the auto attack cancels, the ultimate burst damage, Pele's got insane burst potential, as well as AoE lockdown. If anyone moves up to try and stop her, she can knock up people around her. I think Pele is one of the go-to backline divers, especially if you're looking to blow up someone instantly. Uh, the age-old adage when I used to pick Pele is, if I trade myself for literally any carry, I've done my job. And I think that's probably what Obey's going to be going for here. We'll see if we can, can do his job up against this Cupid last pick for SSG. The twilight of Weekend's SPL career, for now, is the asterisk. Let's throw it over to the casters for game one. Thank you very much, Agro and Mifflin. Dolson and Hindu man for the rare Dolson Hindu cast here today for Obey up against SSG. And, and Graham, I kind of want to pick up right on that Weekend conversation. Obviously, kind of the twilight of his career notwithstanding, a lot of the success that we saw from Obey last week was a little bit more aggression from Weak, and remember he was helping his team find first blood. And I'm curious if we're going to see a similar week in here today. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting point, right? I mean, he, he announced yesterday this could be some of the last games we see him in the SPL. A weird time to do it for my liking as well, just before you go into a set against SSG. Sure. <laughs> so it's kind of it's going to be a bit of an awkward situation in this one. Draft-wise, though, Myth, uh, sorry, Dave, I've got to say, like this draft between these two teams, that was a really interesting battle of tactical warfare that it we was. saw there. The desk was really talking it through, but this Cupid pick, they didn't really get a chance to touch on it. This could really shut down on what a lot of Obey can really do. They already mentioned how good the CC is from Space Station Gaming, but not being able to leap away for the likes of Woey, this could be a really good individual 1v1 matchup if these Hunters get left alone. That's uh, so true, uh, especially with Wowie again, uh, a side weekend being so important to, despite not a win, a, a seeming improvement from Obey, and I think SSG seem kind of privy to that, starting to pick around some of the success that Obey has had. And I think that lends itself to to a conversation about Ducky as well, and the Sobek over in that short lane, in the solo lane, up against Nika. We figured Jormungandr would be a contested pick here. It seems like they're trying to set up Ducky for success the longer this game goes on. Yeah, they both bring the same sort of thing to the team composition, though, right? Both Guardians, both going to be able to potentially dive the backline, survive, absorb damage. Solbeck's recent buffs have really allowed him a little bit more of an asset towards his team again. He wasn't far off already. I mean, two forms of CC, a, a CC immune element that'll last forever, give him regeneration, and some sustain in the kit. Yeah, Solbeck's pretty good. Just a little bit more of that. <laughs> I will say, these two teams though, Dave, on paper with how they performed just lately, there's a lot of comparisons. Rafa, inbound, yeah. are tied at the moment in terms of deaths in the FBL. Second up, 
inbound, sorry, Kerio and Weaken, they're also tied on deaths. They are the bottom four players for deaths in the SPL. That's true. The difference is we get to really see what Obey need to work on and what Space Station are doing to still find wins with the tanks on the flash line. And, and I think kind of on, on that vein, this has got to be an important game, not only for Obey to continue to build off those improvements, but kind of on the flip side, I think, for SSG almost, where, where everyone has them coming in, top of this, top of the league team. Yeah. They come in with synergy, expecting big things, and they have done well, but they're a humble two and two right now. So I think when you look at a matchup against Obey and then a matchup later this week against D United, it's almost a, a prove it week for SSG and, and why they maybe receive so much hype coming into it. Really is, and I think the biggest point you mentioned there, Dave, as well, is the fact that this is, you know, SSG is supposed to be the top. Obey are currently at the bottom. If this isn't a successful, good stomping of Obey here, SSG <laughs> are not looking like the same caliber we saw from last year. And I only reference that stomping of Obey is because, well, we've seen other teams do it this year, right? Teams that right. SSG, on paper, we would have expected them to win. No, you're right, and this is one where SSG will look to fire themselves out of a cannon and really build on an early game lead. But again, I kind of go back to Obey, and I look at Wolfie now on this uh, the Raijin in the mid lane. Remember their game against D United last week, and a lot of that stemming from early presence from Weekend. They they gank for Wolfie, kind of that that two man in the mid lane. Wolfie off. Speaking of three ganks. kills, and it could be here right now. Wolfie has his ultimate weak and has found first blood. You speak it hey, into babe. existence and obey. Strike first. Listen, as a as a caster for Smite, right? You're supposed to have a curse, not a you know not not the <laughs> other way round, right? You legit just spoke about it and then it happened. Are you predicting the future here, Dave? Is that what's going on? It, it, it might be. Look, I, I set these things up. Wolfie, you know, we okay, can, you you can cast me later. Every game at this point. Yeah. Like, it, it seems Obey to be what, what ends up game. working. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I, I love the pressure plane. You were just talking about this is when we can get aggressive and they start to find some form combining with Wolfie in the mid lane. I think the, the biggest thing that we've noticed though is that we can and inbound, they're really flexing up the god pool so far, you know? They've played eight right. games before this. They've picked seven different gods each. That's a lot of, you know, mixing and changing, right. just trying to find what works. Sometimes it's better to just dial into one or two and allow that to really set in stone a little bit more so. It shows that Obey are really going through the motions to find out what's going to work and what isn't. And I think, you know, as great of a start as this is for Obey, and I think it's exactly what they look for, it's probably some of finding that identity, I think, that Agro was talking about on the desk. Let's throw all these darts at the dartboard, see what works, uh, try to find some success. Wolfie on the Raijin is one thing that I think is stuck out for Obey. It's and the it only should. thing. I mean, he, he, yeah. right, it's the only thing that's stuck out, I suppose. And. Off to an early assist here, and Weekend grabbing that first blood. But, you know, I can't help but be tense, I think, Graham, because this is very similar to what we saw against E United last week. But there just isn't that same consistency moving into the mid game where SSG, despite losing first blood, still right there in gold differential. I don't know. I think Obey have a lot to build on from this early game. It's a oh, good I start, yeah. but they haven't proven just yet that it'll come to fruition in a win. And that's always been a sort of issue that Obey's had, and that's where the discussion points have been. Without we can be in the shot caller for this team, it's responsibility on inbound and Wolfie. And the early game is the easiest thing to correct. You play them more often than not. The mid game, True. well, that's going to be a different state every single time. You know, 15, 20 minutes in the game, things are going to be different each time. So it's going to take time for Obey to adjust, adapt, and get better at the calls around there. The Obey, the Obey in the early game, though, that's where we're seeing the signs of life. And I, I yep. kind of get bored of using signs of life, but we kind of have to, because that's where they have found You're results. Right. And touching on the, you know, the Raijin again, I mean, the Raijin for Wolfie in mid lane, that's the only consistent pick they've really had alongside Anher for Woey. Both of them right. picked four times. Outside of that, every other roll mixed up a lot, but Cherio's going up here. And he comes right back down and... He's found some good damage on Tawik, and that's going to be the first kill in this game oh, no. for SSG. Ducky has the He's knock dead? up, but members of SSG Dude. collapsing. See you later, oh, Ducky. Back into oh, the corner behind the FG pit, and SSG find a couple of kills.
Listen, we talk about Winion sometimes, Dave, right? But there was a Winion that tracked Ducky through that jungle there. <laughs> that was a gank from Weaken on Tanika that got reversed by Cherio. And when Ducky tries to escape, that minion, that minion just blocked his way. He ate the charge, and that was the end of Ducky's life with his ultimate being down. So quick turnaround from Space Station to find that 2-1 now because of it. And I think that's exactly what we wanted to see out of, of Cherio, mainly, I think, on that Thor. You, you, you talk about early game impact on these junglers, and Thor is kind of what comes to mind for me, especially with someone who has proven to be as aggressive in the early game as Cherio likes to be. So off to a roaring start now, our SSG. They were even in gold despite giving up first blood. They find themselves, I don't know, call it 800 gold in the lead here. And I think they're in a good spot, Graham, to build on that and really extend out this early game. Yeah, hope so. I mean, we will see what they can actually do with this lead now, Space Station, because the composition is beautiful. I like what Myth said on the desk, too. Like, Space Station are really good at frontline engagements, barreling in three members. This Thor, this Athena, this Jormungandr can all dive on in, but that can leave this Cupid and Merlin susceptible to so some wraparound damage from weakened from behind. Just keep an eye on how these engagements go. Ducky said in the pre-game interview, you know, if we can look to focus at the front line first, we can get to that back line. That was the mm -hmm. game plan that Obey seemed to have. I just think it's a trickier task when the front line has ridiculous amounts of engaged potential. I mean, Thor, Athena, and Jormungandr right. can all get off the map, you know? They can all relocate really easily. Right. And that causes a lot of problems to try and even pick those in the first place. Some level of globalization, I don't know what the word is, for, for SSG with a lot of their picks. There has yeah. kind of been this focus around the, the long lane today, not necessarily kills-wise, but of course with the changes coming into the 7.4 patch, haven't quite seen as much Guardian rotation, and that leaves doors open for things like this, the, these more intermittent trades, uh, the Guardians, the supports, hanging around a little bit longer in that long lane. Yeah, I think the reason we're seeing a little bit more of that right now too, David, at least in this set, is to do with the fact it's Athena and Cupid in lane. Cupid just wants to get bolstered up a little bit more because Ul's early game, very potent. We know the kill right. potentially he's got. Cupid's going to take a bit of time to build up. So having Rafa stick around there after the couple of picks just allows him to get to that point where he's stacking his items and can start taking trades with Woey. Eventually, this lane will turn where Cupid can be the aggressor. But speaking of aggression... Cherio takes to the skies, Anvil of Dawn maybe looking down towards Ducky, but instead it's the blue buff that gets dunked on, and I think Cherio will take that as his exit cue, and you bring up stacking items, Vote just now finishing up that Transcendence, Obey is able to finish off their blue buff, and a different mindset there from, from Wowie. He went full-blown Transcendence, now has it fully stacked, so I don't know, maybe call it a faster start there for that Uwer. Yeah, because Vote went for the mobility option a little bit more of the power from the Warrior Tabby, making sure he's a little bit more mobile in this lane. And I think that is in case Weakens going to look for the ganks. Pele, very, very mobile, speedy little character. Good taunt in mid, though. I'm going to return it. Weakens is there to collapse as well. Rapper locked down, and Weakens finds his second kill of the game and second for Obey as well. And we are right oh. back to even, but Cheerio, he's here to play. Wolfie, see you later. Space Station Gaming, they pull one back. I mean, always with that percussive storm that you see from a Raijin, you are sat in place. Funny enough, in the dual lane, though, you get to see exactly what Cupid's going to try and do in this lane of bullying that world. But yeah, go back to that fight again. I mean, Wolfie, throwing out the percussive storm, you sit in place, you're a sitting duck. Cherio goes, yep. thanks very much. I'm going to hit you with the double tap and pick myself up a free kill. Now he's looking at Weaken. The Cherio's found the stun. Weaken forced to move himself away from that engagement. So for the time being, SSG maybe have a little bit more jungle control over by the red buff. And warding would tell you just that. You can look at the minimap, deep wards already for SSG. You're going to know when anyone from Obey is trying to move on this left side of the jungle. And I think that lends itself to maybe a Fury attempt here shortly for Space Station. Yeah, and also the chance for Vote to keep the aggression going in the lane, you know? Keep bullying this Ul potentially right. early. One of the reasons that Cupid's in this is definitely for the Ul matchup. Ul without a CC immune ultimate? Well, Fields of Love are going to make sure you live a living hell in that circumstance unless your beads are available. So just keep it on that matchup. I think that's what they're trying to power play around here with Vote. Mm -hmm. But then when it gets to the team flights with this Cupid, that Fields of Love once again will really limit some of the options that Obey have. A lot of their roster here rely on that mobility to engage, to disengage. If that Fields of Love can be saved for those moments, it could be a demise for the Obey roster. 
and you look at what's worked for Obey up to this point in this game, and it's, you know, weak in finding good rotations. One time being traded out, granted, for a kill for SSG. You look at weak and you, you look at this Pele. How do you think Obey maybe try to move through Weekend in this lead that he's had? I, don't, I think through, moving through Weekend is like not really the right story to mention because I think sure. the idea from what I understand about Obey is that they're going to let Weekend do his thing, right? That seems to be the game plan of Weekend does his thing and let Wolfie and Inbound make the call and make the shot calling and Weekend feels the game out as he needs. At the moment, I think he's done a good job of this, but it's really going to be about whether Weekend can get to that back line, as the desk was right. saying earlier on. Can he get those windows where Dardes is left alone, where Vote is left alone? Good pluck on Dardes, though, and it burnt be, the beat. Too. Yeah, over on SSG's blue side, there is still an engagement as Cherio takes to the <laughs> skies. Wowie, he's looking a little nervous here. Down comes Cherio. That's a killing spree for the Thor. 3-0-1. Ducky looking like he'll get out alive. Weak and will as well. But the three-man collapse in the long lane, and this Thor is really starting to hit. Prime example though, right? If one team's ganking one side, try and answer back on the other. That was Obey getting aggressive in mid on Merlin. Merlin escapes the noose, gets over towards Nika and safety. But then in response, Space Station rip away Rowie's life. Pyromancer though in trade is pretty good for Obey. Bad news is, Space Station recognize that now and they're gonna get a goal for you. Yeah, talk about trades and counter trades. Obey realized that SSG have three men near this long lane, we'll take Pyro, and then SSG say, okay, well, nobody's over here by the Gold Fury, and they take that away. That'll be the largest gold lead of the game 13 minutes in. About 2,500 gold now for SSG, and Cherio's locked in that Erendite for himself, second fully completed item overall. And, and that's what I wanted to see with this Thor pick. You, you get an early kill, and you start to snowball the rest of this game. Yet normally I would have been like, man, why is Obey not got anyone at the goal fury? What the hell? No one went over to check it and they just gave it for free. Well, under the circumstances, they thought that was going to go down sooner than that anyway. They'd already killed Rowie in the lane. That side of the map was free for a while. They expected that goal fury would have been started up, so continued on the pyromancer and goal fury goes down after the fact. But that was really just came out in tow for space station more than anything else. Dada survived mid, they get the kill on Worry, and it turns into a gold lead where they split the map up. Gold Fury is obviously more valuable than the Pyromancer at any stage of the game. Well, almost. Almost any stage of the game. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Obey will be at least happy that they get a little extra move speed coming out of base, maybe a little extra gold in their back pocket as well. And we, yeah. we touched on uh, on some of the Hunter builds early here. Wowie going for, for Transcendence completed before even moving into those boots. I gotta say, uh, Hindu, vote picking up the, the Jotun's Wrath, that stands out to me only because it's a hunter. We might have to touch on that in just a second as Chierio dunks down for his fourth kill of the game. This is a tier Oof. two tower dive and Dardes says thank you. Two kills so far for SSG. Inbound will to escape with his life, but that's a great Fields of Love from Vote on the back side. Inbound has to burn the actives. Nika and Dardes though capitalize for the kills. It's a four for none in SSG. They continue to pull ahead. I mean, two people getting chin uh, pinched in your own jungle between the tier one and tier two tower that's up. Then the duo lane comes in to try and help out and dies too. Disastrous for Obey. But what a great situation for Space Station Gaming to be in there. You saw we could try and charge him with the ult, trying to return some damage. He just evaporated to the amount that Don has put out <laughs> on that Merlin. That's the power of the CC the Space Station bring. And catching him behind a tier one tower like that, Bad for business. Not only that, now the towers are going to go down too. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where my mind went next, because I think in at least the games we've seen today, a kill lead hasn't meant everything, right? I mean, you look at our, our, our first set of the day, there's maybe a kill lead for, for Sanguine, but gold lead is for E United. In, in this case, SSG are, are winning kind of in every facet of this game. They're, they're 5k gold in the lead at 15 minutes. Their towers are still standing, obeys aren't. This is... SSG's game for the taking at this point and burning both actives from Wowie is certainly one way to extend that lead. Oh. The, the the explosion will get it done and Vote will find his first kill of the game. And this Cupid's starting to come online. And a prime example of exactly how that Cupid all matchup goes, especially if you've got an Athena waiting in the wings for the follow-up torn after Beans, Beans Burnage. But yeah, you did mention that Jotun's Wrath. It's not something we generally see in a lot of the AD carries. It's a right. marginal amount of power, but there's good penetration on the iron, but more importantly, there's more cooldown reduction. It shows that Vote really wants to spam those abilities a little bit more so, get those Fields of Love back up, because the more rotations of Fields of Love, the less likely the Beans are going to be available. 
Lucerio rotates over to the solo lane. Ducky stunned down. He is somewhat tanky. We'll have to use the ultimate. But Athena is here to play as well. Rapper will dash his way in. Three will not connect. Pacherio's there for the follow-up, the two-tap, and the rampage. And Ducky falling for the second time this game. Could be a collapse, oh. though. <laughs> and votes on the run now. Aegis is early. Avoid some of the damage. Blink Kimble feels a little down. Wolfie gets credit for the kill. Dardes turns it around. And you know what? The chase might be on for more here because there's a couple of low members there. Yeah, you've gotten a kill, but you've also gotten the attention of everyone from SSG, yeah. who is now here underneath your own tier 2 tower. ROP, that's a nice double taunt from rapper Cherio. Five kills under his belt, five assists as well. Dardes grabs his fourth of the game, make it a double kill for this mid lane Merlin SSG. They pull 10 kills ahead of Obey. Yeah, vote in that situation caught completely unaware of the rotation coming in. Obe are just trying to farm up scraps from these waves coming in. Catch this Cupid on his own, so take him out. Problem being is that Fields have lifted so much damage to the roster, they were too unhealthy to continue to fight. And Space Station walk in, pick up the scraps, weaken, gets his speed, but then uh, he'll go back to base with it, I guess. Oof. He can go back and buy a little bit quicker now, I suppose. I've loved what I've seen out of Rapper on this Athena so far. We, we threw out the idea of maybe it being Cherio in that jungle. Yeah. But I think it's found its value and then some. Completely agree, and I think that's the flexibility that some of these rosters have, with the likes of having Cherio, who's very much adapted to playing Guardians in the jungle a lot of the time. Same can be said for Obey with that Sobek selection, you know? That gave a bit of... Um, disguise to an extent a bit of hidden what were they going to do with it in terms of be able to switch that around between multiple roles too it's always good to have that look on your team i would say that raf has never been the the greatest athena player of all time i'll say that sure. but he has improved over the years in terms of his ability to use that correctly and like really make real good use of the athena i'd say he's still a little bit of a drop below cherry on performances on it but he's catching up quick <laughs> Well, it is going to be the Fury now that SSG maybe look towards. Don't have quite as deep ward coverage as they did early in this game. Obey have to be careful, though. I mean, you, you saw what Obey found in one kill onto Vote. The immediate collapse from SSG was enough to kind of complete the sweep. There is some maybe shallower ward coverage on Obey's side of the map. A collapse onto Vote could be imminent. Ducky blinks through, misses the pluck. Vote will drop down the Field of Love. Grab the uh, the stun and probably more damage than Ducky returned onto him. I mean, very unfortunate the blink misses from Ducky there, but it still pays off for Obey to an extent. <laughs> with with Vo actually using his ultimate there to defensively use, he's not going to available for this fight at the Fury. Well, Cherio might need to rotate through instead. At the moment, he's just going to push down that tier one tower in the long lane. He'll go back and. Might have to use Anvil of Dawn to rotate into the fight. Rapper has found the taunt onto inbound. It's Obey who start and finish this Fury, but can they get out alive? This Run. would be a big win for them if they can. Nika Run. takes to the Serpent, and he's swinging he's on through. Ducky has to go underground as well, and it looks like SSG might think twice. Uh. We can pull back. Dardes grabs another kill. The tier oh. two tower is no safe haven for Obey. Love the play from Obey, right? Get the Oni Fury and dip, dodge, and dive out of town as quick as possible. Makes so much sense. That corner, though, at that tier 2 tower, they turned around to return some damage. That just gave Space Station that window to take a couple of lives. We can get it taken off the table. This makes it even easier to strip away even more towers. So that Oni Fury is not going to be as useful as they once had. I love the call from Obey. They found the window. They get what they need, but they don't get out for free. Space Station punished them, and they punished them hard. The global gold from the That's two right. tier 2 towers and the speed buff in the jungle. That hurts. That's enough for a 12k gold lead now, 20 minutes in to this game. And I think next objective outside of Phoenix's and Towers, of course, has to be this Fire Giant. And I'm wondering now if SSG have really gotten themselves so far ahead in this game, if Obey even consider moving out, or maybe Obey think the opposite, where the only chance back into this game is an FG steal. I mean, honestly, the last Fury we just saw, I was kind of 50-50 in my head of like, is this a good <laughs> idea? Should they be on Phoenix line right. at this point? But the problem is, is the levels, right? The level discrepancy is huge here. Three levels in solo, five levels in jungle, three in mid. You've got to get farm. Like, SSG are not going to let you continue to farm at the Phoenix line forever. You've got to try and get out there and get some farm. But in doing so, you leave yourself open. Obey, answer our question. It is a free fire giant for Space Station Gaming with a collapse on the back end as well. Fields of Love down onto Wolfie who has to use the Aegis, but that only saves your life for a few seconds as Rapper 
adds his second kill of the game. Could be a collapse on the mid lane here with Cherio identifying weakened, but Raffer has moved up that mid lane. Right side tier two tower, looking a little bit nervous now as SSG grab a fire giant, grab a kill, and take control of the map. I mean, when you're foraging for scraps for somebody everybody else is, it becomes a bit of a one-man army show, and there's not a whole lot Obey can do here. So obviously, all splitting up around the map, they have to concede all this map pressure. The problem is, is that the team's getting confident in Space Station. Look at Rafa right now. He's diving a Phoenix on his own against, well, two tank, well, sorry, a tank, and obviously a huge damage dealing with Pele. But that's how good and confident he can be now, because yep. he's got a three-level lead over Weaken. That's the support. They're just too far behind now, Obey. It's going to be a Phoenix line defense, but I don't hold up much hope here. And this is a stretch, but how do you feel about the Obey Phoenix defense? I mean, Wolfie can do some good damage there. I mean, Ducky may be find, finding a pluck, but at some point, the levels in the gold is so discrepant that regardless of how good your defense is, it might not matter. Yeah, that's the biggest key there is like you can play this inch perfect from Obey and probably still struggle. But there is a small window, you know? Really good turn ultimate, maybe out of Wolfie that sets up. If we can, can potentially get to the black line, to those squishier targets we said in Dardis and Vote. But if you look at Dardis and Vote so far, I mean, they've both only died once. They're very comfortable in terms of their build now. Yep. It's going to be a big task for a level 17 assassin to really make as much of an impact. It's going to take an army. It's going to take a whole team to try and stop this. And I don't think Space Station will give them that window, you know? I expect what we're seeing on the map now will continue, Dave. No. Cherio will just keep the split push going. He's got that global rotation. And if he gets pressured himself, well, he can have Athena join the fray on his side to support there. Tricky task for Obey here. Let's see what they do. Yeah, Cherio at 508, I think, will be feeling confident against any member of Obey that chooses to step up. It will be the five man. Left side Phoenix, Cherio grabs the kill, weakened, pulled in, up to the skies, goes the Thor and he might dunk down towards the back line here, Ducky taken low, and it's Dardes and Vote and the rest of SSG looking to finish off the kills, Cherio has identified his target, and it's the back line of Obey, oh. the collapse is complete, the Deicide is there, and SSG, Graham, I think, that might just be the game. Oh yeah, 40 seconds of everyone outside of week and yeah, with a couple of minions and so, this is an easy walk home for Space Station Gaming. Initial engagement there, Dave. Ducky's pluck was great. It hit Don as yeah. it forced their beads. But then what else could they do? The fight continued. Space Station, level lead, I am lead. Easy day at the office in game one. And, and you look at what kind of just spiraled there. I mean, talk about a first blood again for Obey. They get first blood again. Yeah. And then it's the rotations from Chariot, Dardes comes online. I mean, that is clinical from SSG. And I think in large part, thanks to that Thor. Yeah, and I think the, the big talking point is about with Weaken like announcing that he may be retiring. I think everyone's like, is this going to be yeah. his last time or I don't necessarily think it's going to be that quick. Maybe he's been a bit preemptive with it. We'll find out in the coming weeks. But at the same time, you know, everyone's going to write it off as a Weaken failed step. I think the team as a whole, the early game is good. What are they doing in the mid game? They're all lost. They, they don't know what they're That's really true. doing. They've got to keep working on that, Dave. It's going to take time. You can't do it over four weeks. Trust me, I've seen it. Unfortunately, it's a similar start and a similar finish for Obey this time around as SSG take game one in 25 minutes. Graham and I have talked about it enough that we'll go back to Ryan to break it down. Thank you, Dave and Hindu. Hopefully Hindu can take some time to, to fix the picture behind him. I'm sure it was nothing more than a, than a small oversight by our fearless leader. But Obey Alliance have another rough game here, Mifflin. Space Station in control from minute one. It felt like, yes, Obey Alliance get first blood, and Weekend and Wolfie do what you want Raijin and Pele to do, which is get lane pressure and invade and be aggressive. And then it all seemed to fall apart after that. I mean... Obey's draft, you asked me backstage, what are we? What are they going for? They draft the Uller to get the pressure in the long lane. That falls through immediately. Yes, they found first blood off that fantastic pressure out of Raijin and Pele, but they couldn't transition it into any sort of lead. You pick the Sobek to facilitate team fights in the late game, but by the time Ducky was able to rotate out, you're already 10, 15,000 gold down. I, I want to be able to evaluate and analyze Obey's play, but they got so blown out of the water that a lot of it's lost. A lot of the minutia is lost because SSD just looks so much better today. Yeah, there's a point of no return for sure. When Raffer finishes the game with more XP than anybody on Obey Alliance, when your smallest XP deficit is two levels and everyone else is higher than that, 
there is no analysis left. It, you know, you, you squeeze that fruit dry, it's over at that point. And that's really what ended up happening to Obey here in this game. So at the end of the day, I think you just have to go back to what can we change in picks and bans to try and not put ourselves in this position. And I think it's got to be taking this Thor away from Cherio at some point. I mean, yes, Dardez is going to go 8-1. Maybe if you're picking Uller, you take away the Cupid so your your aggression over there doesn't get completely neutered by that Fields of Love. But th this global pressure from Cherry, I think, was was a really, really big problem. He controlled the map, and it was reflected in his GPM. I think he had 250 more GPM at the end of that game than Weekend did. And it's because he was able to continually farm his own camps and then leverage his global to find the ganks as well. So most junglers, they have to make the trade-off. Okay, I want to look to gank, so I'm going to slow down my farm. Cherry on this Thor, you don't have to. You clear the buff, you ult from immediately inside the buff, you're in the fight already. Uh, it, it was just so much outclassed on the side of SSG. And uh, saying that Obey just needs to reevaluate from step one, go back to the draft, forget the last game, that's been the narrative every single week. They need to start learning what they're doing properly, and what they do properly is the first 50 seconds of the game. We see that they've been able to find these first floods now. They've been able to get very slight leads in the early. Now they need to take it a step further. Do what you do well, but do it more well. Use the lead you get to transfer into an objective or try and force more fights where you know the enemy team's going to be disadvantaged. It seems like anytime Obey does something right, they're too busy patting themselves on the back that, to really push that lead. Well, we'll see if they can do a better job at doing more well better whatever was yeah what you you that's, that's yeah, we, what i got that, that's good for both of us there we, we both nailed that one obey in that first pick slot once again the sobek is what they went to last time they were in first pick do you think that that was a problem do you think that ducky needs something with more pressure to try and leverage that early game i don't think you can ever say that ducky is the problem he's doing what he's supposed to do what are you supposed to do on sobek you farm up for late game and then rotate in and play around the team fight, which is what he did. Unfortunately, his team was so far behind that it didn't matter that he was so back. I think putting him on something that is more aggressive could fit that style a little bit more. You want your side lanes winning. You want some aggression coming out. Why not put your star player on something that can actually carry the game? I'd like to see him on something like a Kamazots or an Osiris where he can try and get his own lead and then try and transfer the wealth throughout the rest of his team instead of trying to facilitate something that doesn't exist, which is Obey's late game. Space Station now with their second ban, considering what they want to go for in this slot. I mean, Kuzumbo Aphrodite still staying the same here for Obey. I, I think I could see a world where Obey is willing to take that Sobek early on again and then maybe start trying to pick Thor away? I mean, I don't I don't think that Space Station is going to let you ban Thor in the second phase after how well Cherry played it last game. I think that's going to be something that Space Station is going to prioritize pretty early on here, if given the opportunity to do so. We'll see if that comes to pass, as now it's Obey's turn to toss another ban into the ring, and it, their, their bans are staying consistent. Still Aphrodite, Kuzumbo, and Morgan. I mean, the early game for Obey was good. And when I say early game, I want to emphasize early. Post one minute, it's all SSG. But that first minute went really well for Obey. So if they could just harness that, I think they don't have to worry about it too much. They draft so they can win in the early. And they're able to do it for a split second. If they extend it forward, there's not much they need to work on. It's all execution going forward for Obey. Saying that they don't have an identity is easy to say because they haven't been able to get to that late game phase. They haven't been able to show what they've been working on. I think once they get their mechanics up to par, once they figure out how to farm the map a little bit more efficiently, a lot of what we see as main glaring issues are going to fade away. Interesting. So SSG switch up the ban. They ban Merlin themselves, even though Dardes just had a phenomenal performance on it. And Obey, they stay the same. They stick with that Sobek in that first pick. So Space Station here, if they want to stay consistent, would be going for that Yorm. But instead, Space Station also decides to change it up. And they go with the Uller this time around. Uller Thor, two gods that have had a lot of success at the SPL level so far this year. Both high pressure, high CC gods, and SSG look like they're going to want to make it a quick one. This Uller could flex towards mid, they could flex it towards the long lane. Even Thor could flex into the jungle or soul lane. They, they're not really showing their hand too much. I think it is fair to bet that that is going to go towards Cherio, the Thor that is. But 
this pressure that they have is going to be very hard to deal with. It's uh, very similar to what they had last game, except now they're looking to win harder and even earlier. So Raijin still the pick there for Wolfie. No real surprise there for him. And Hun Bats this time around for Weekin. This pick a little bit different than that of the Pele. A little bit less backline dive, a little bit more team fight presence. How do you feel about the switch up? It makes sense. If you want to pick Sobek, it means you're looking to play for the late game. Might as well pick a god that's going to be able to participate a lot more easily. Pele, as I said, is really looking for that one-on-one -on -one trade in the back line, whereas Hunbots can go in there, burn out some of those CC immunities, burn out some ultimates with his ult, and then back up and let Sobek start to instigate the fights, look for plucks or something like that. I like the draft from Obey. It's a, it's a small change, but it is an important one. I love this Athena in conjunction with the Thor there for Cherio. We saw this we saw this team do this last year where you get the Athena alt on the Thor and you get a ton of dunk damage all at once. But it's hard to execute, man. I mean, that timing window is not easy to land. But I think Cherio and Raffer have done it better than just about anybody in the league. So I love seeing these two played together. The Space Station turned their attention towards Wowie in that long lane and take away his Jingwei, a safe option up against that Uller. I mean, I think Obey, the, these three picks are all individually very strong. They all have good crowd control. They all have good damage. They're, they're not super great early necessarily, but the late game for all these gods is really, really strong. Maybe if they put inbound on something like that Serket or, or, or the Fenrir or the Hercules, something that can get them some pressure early on, I think this, this draft could come together very nicely for Obey. So far, every single piece looks like it will fit in very well. It's whether or not they can weather the storm. I think it's interesting that you point out that inbound on a bridge pick would be nice. I think that he could even forego being a support completely if they want to play for that late game point. Even pick something like a Robin or a Tear that could just fight in. It's going to be very hard for them to maintain an even lane, especially considering they have all this global pressure on the side of SSG. If at any point Obey starts to move up, they have to worry about Uller Axe. they got to worry about Defender of Olympus, Anvil of Dawn. There's so many ways that SSG can shut down aggression in that long lane that maybe dedicating your support towards a secondary jungler that can rotate towards mid a lot more quickly would be the way to go. Interesting Kakullin pickup here by Nika, a god that we don't see very much of in the SPL right now. We saw Variety play it earlier to a distinct lack of success. And that leaves open the Horus. That was the pick that I was thinking of. And this, I think, is perfect for what Obey needed. It's a beads burner. It capitalizes on you not having beads very well. It brings you early pressure because he does a lot of damage by himself. If that paired alongside the Ho Yi, I think that this is a phenomenal five gods that Obey have put together here. Fantastic kill potential in lane off the back of the Huyi. That lockdown is going to be incredibly good. It's a fantastic reposition tool. Kind of crazy to think that Horus made it all the way to last pick, but power to Obey, they run away with it. This draft might be the best draft Obey's ever had. Yeah, I think it's one of the better ones of the year, but they're not exactly feeling that great because Space Station also got a very strong draft. Discordia 10th overall there for Dardes. And that Discordia passive, either on the Uller or on the Kakullin, is going to be a nightmare for Obey Alliance to deal with. You think Obey has got it in the cards here, Miff, or you think we're going home early? Uh, you can never count out someone burning their youth. Weaken could very easily open the fifth gate here and push forward. I'm rooting for him. We'll see if he does it. Game two. What? SSG what did he say, to catch What was that? <laughs> What does that I mean? I, I'm trying to find some symbol. What is the fifth gate? Is that an what anime that? reference? Is that what I'm missing? Like, it's I gotta be, right? A Naruto, I want to say, is what he's from, but I'm probably wrong. Like, well, I don't know. The, the burning the youth, I suppose, uh, made sense. Okay, yep, you're right. Okay, so so the beauty of Did working from home is is that we can that right? you know, quickly look league? at things. It is the the eight gates are, are in Naruto. Oh, uh, and apparently each gate is a thing. Yeah. Uh, here we go. The the gate of limit is is gate number five, and, and I guess we can will open that here in game number okay. two. And inbound might be the first on the menu here for SSG's duo lane. Kind of the opposite, maybe, of what you expect with a uh, a Horus and a Huyi being paired together. Man, the Weebs are going to be so proud of me for getting that reference. I'm in <laughs> shock myself more than hey, anything you else. You knocked it like, out of the park. Well, 
It's Mifflin. It must be something. Turning the attention towards the game, though, like, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about one thing more than anything else, Dave. You know, if Inbound's going to be a shot caller, right, and, like, he's going to be someone that has to leave from the front and be the shot caller for this team, as well as stepping into the support role in the SPL, He's got he's got to get some support somewhere. And I think, honestly, sure, Horus is a great pick here. And I'm not just talking about Horus, but his god selections, right? Like, across the... This is the 10th game, I believe, of the SPL. He's played nine different gods at this point. Nine! Like, you need to kind of narrow that down a bit. Cool, it's great to have a really deep god pool and stuff. But, like, right. constantly changing it up every single time, it makes it tricky, man. Like, look at Wolfie, for example. A lot of focus towards Raijin. Makes sense. That's giving the hey, Raijin game cozy in mid. Yeah? You want to kind of do the same thing with Inbound in my eyes. It's great to be flexible, but I think it comes at a cost sometimes that I don't think Obey realize that that just puts more pressure on you. And I think the other aspect is you're trying to keep the enemy team on their toes a little bit with your picks. But at the same yep. time, you're keeping your own team on their toes because they don't know what they're going to get with this time. <laughs> You're right, but, and, and I think from from Horus, though, I think to be fair, we've seen nothing, well, maybe not nothing oh, but success, and Jackson. right now it might even be last of success. <laughs> he gets taunted in. Come on! There's the caster's curse for Obey. A rapper yeah. finds the first kill. I knew it when you said it. It's going to happen. <laughs> And that's, that's just the pressure in the lane that you're going to have with the all early on. You know, like, Horus can be great in the early stages alongside a Ho-Yi, but nothing stops the power of the all combo. And not only that, the Athena are alongside him. I mean, the that's Athena's true. back in the meta. One of the reasons is because she did get a little bit of love, you know? the defend Her actual damage output did increase and be a little bit more front-loaded for something with Athena that we didn't see for quite a while. That's allowed her to burst a little bit harder with that shield wall more than anything else. Sure, the taunt's always been there, Dave. Like, the dash mm -hmm. taunt combo, there it is again. Oh, and it's going to lock down inbound one more time. You just come back from base, and you're immediately missing half of your health upon stepping back. And it's like Obey, or, or SSG, rather, couldn't quite make out if they fully stole away that purple buff. But I think that's the important thing to look at. You know, first blood, you know, it sucks. You're, you're a little bit behind in lane now. You're, you're both support and hunter, both one level down. But it's when these jungle buffs start to stack up against you when things can really start to, uh, to feel lopsided. So... If Obey are able to at least get that under their belt, maybe they'll feel comfortable. And Wolfie, maybe looking for a rotation here. Blink through from inbound, but an immediate stun from SSG. Volt will leap his way away. Wolfie takes to the ultimate. That'll surely be another early kill for the Obey mid laner. Get out, collapse, but Cheerio, hello, down. He dunks a double stun and a kill. Oh. That's great play from Cheerio. Wolfie with no mana. The chase is on, and I'm not sure the chase will last very long. No, it won't, unless he gets some support soon from Wobby. And the fear no evil oh, from Wilson turns it around. Wolfie credited with the kill. Tell you what, that didn't work out too bad at all, Dave, when you look at the big picture there. Wolfie hit level five and immediately goes, hey, inbound. Hey, Wobby, I know you guys are struggling. I am rotating with my ult. Can we make something happen? Inbound's like, yeah, sure. I'll go in schmuck style every single time, baby. Blinks <laughs> on in, sets up the kill. Wolfie gets it. I think the biggest disconnect there was Space Station were just doing their red at the same time, right? So that yep. pick and left ends up getting collapsed on immediately. And Weekend wasn't level 5 yet. He went to his speed, made sure he got that so he could hit the level 5, so couldn't get to that fight in time. The idea from Obey was there. Space Station got away with a bit of murder for my liking, but it paid off both ways around. Yep, tied up at two kills here. Yeah, and that's what I meant, of course, when I said the chase might not last long. I was clearly yeah. predicting Weaken to collapse in, drop the fear no evil, get the kill. Absolutely. We all saw it coming, Dave. Come on. Right, right. The, the, the script was written. You've read the script. I, I've read yeah. it. You're right. <laughs> I'm fully, fully in tune with that. But it's, it's, it's a tale as old as time with what we've seen from Obey, and, and more specifically, Wolfie. You've got two kills on the board now for this Raijin. Can you move this to, to mid-game success? The the e United set last week says no, but now there's a different opportunity. Wolfie with a couple kills under his belt, and admittedly, a, you know, while it might be even, a good start for what we want to see from Obey. Yeah, the pressure's on Wolfie's shoulders now to like catapult this lead that he's been able to develop for himself with the support and the rotation that he did. It was an individual play that paid off to support his team, but now he's got to keep that pressure going. And in doing so, Dave, he's going to get the focus of Space Station Gaming. So they're going to gun for that Raijin just a yep. little bit harder now. And that's when you need Obey to rally behind him. And if they're going to collapse on Raijin, they need to either find results elsewhere on the map or counter-initiations that support and make his deaths worthwhile. Keep an eye on it. I expect 
might like to see the focal point now from Space Station, knowing that's the situation there. Oh, and for the next 30 seconds, Wolfie is a little bit uh, more in danger, I suppose, as he's waiting for his beads to come back up, but I'm not sure that's something SSG will be able to capitalize on at the moment. But, but you can see where Cherio's mindset is, much the same as what we saw in game number one. Let's get deep wards on the obey side yeah, of the base. Let, let's keep this long lane safe, and let's open up the map for some rotations. Inbound has been taunted in once more. It's a knockup, but no kills this time. And I look at the options with that many wards on the right and left hand side from Space Station Gaming here, all that red. Where can we can really gank? Like, he can't gank Duo. They're going to see him coming half a mile away. He could be in Timbuktu and they'll still see him right now, right? Like, there's no way you can get over there. So his options are gank a Cucullin in the solo lane with a Sobek. Honestly, don't think you're going to have the damage output to do that between the pair of them. No. Or look for this Discordia mid that's going to have a Thor, that's going to have an Athena as backup options. It makes the options for weak and very limited in the jungle here, but that's just good wall plays from Space Station to make sure they're controlling that left-hand side and limiting the options of rotations. Go all the way around the gold field, yeah. I suppose, is, is True maybe mid. where we can well, look. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about that mid lane camp on the left-hand side, right? Like, that that was once an avenue. You can't go through that anymore. So we right. can technically have to walk through mid, take a left at the red buff to get there, just to gank, and Woey could really do with some right about now with how this is looking. Yeah, he might need some help and has to burn the beads and... Inbound, maybe looking for a collapse play here. That'll take them over to the long lane. Wolfie with two kills. Oh, Look, we'll make it three early. Dad and assist. Vote gets plugged away, but they have to burn the Fear No Evil just to confirm the kill. It's four ultimates traded out for a kill, but Obey Alliance nonetheless extend a little bit of a lead. Yeah, good little play from Obey, honestly, on that rotation out from them. Space Station caught with a pants down there, and I'm a bit surprised they didn't try and find a turnaround play somewhere, but there's nothing really in the jungle for them to try and strip away. There's no real gank potential. Credit where it's due, though. Wolfie played it, used his ultimate perfectly there, positioned it yep. exactly where Vote was trying to telegraph to go to, and the misuse of beads wasn't perfect from Vote, but well played from Obey. Cherio looking for the collapse into the Obey Harpies here, and instead he's found inbound there. Ooh. The blinker, a dash over the wall, rather, from Wolfie. Cherio doesn't connect or doesn't get connected with too much of that damage, so the Thor likely able to make it out alive. Can we say the same for Obey? And at the moment, yes, we can. But still a refreshing look with Wolfie, some confidence, playing aggressive. Oh, yeah, and that crash over the wall. I mean, you heard me. I was like, wow, this is turning out great. Because if they find that yeah. pick there, I think Obey are looking great for this early game for sure. But he just didn't have any extra damage, no further follow up. No one else was really in range to get that final blow. So Cherry ends up slip, slipping the noose there. I think the biggest story, though, is sure, Obey are playing well and getting kills. Don't lazy back him, bam. Come on! This ain't console <laughs> no more! This is SPL! Jeez, every week people lazy back. I'm glad you're here to yell at him. <laughs> I can't deal with it, Dave. But the biggest story here is Space Station. They're still up in gold, right? They're down in gold, kills, right? but up in gold. Experience, still around even. A little bit of a lead. Here goes Cherio again. Where's the target? Gold. <laughs> likely the fear. He'll dunk down and just help his team get some extra damage. Inbound is closing in. Horus Ultimate will be used to the skies for some collapse, but not in time. Instead, he's just caught a Thor stun to the mouth. And SSG, you bring it up, they had a gold lead and maybe a slight XP lead that just got a little bit wider. Inbound will look to shrink that gap as Vote stun and catches a Sunbreaker. Rapper is here thanks to the Ooh. global ult, but Wolfie is as well. A nice double taunt and a couple members of Obey. Two Rapper is there, but so is Cheerio. Spin to win, grab yourself a kill. Rapper says thank you to his jungler and two members of Obey. We'll manage to escape here, but it's a one for one trade. Honestly, Dave, that could have gone so much worse for Obey for a second. I screamed yeah. run because I saw Cherio coming in from the side. But Wolfie's damage output at this point in time, you know, with that uh, Spirit of Desolation online too, he's really swinging at this moment in time. And he's put a lot of damage out with that ultimate. The fact that he's playing this Raijin aggressive, it's very much like what we saw in our Captain Twig with these aggressive dashes in. Yeah, but yeah. it's making work out for Obey right now. They got lucky. But you do need a little bit of luck in these Pro League and, Mo and in MOBA in general. You just need a little bit of luck to go your way. Obey found a small win again there. And they continue to shut down Vote, who is someone on the Space Station roster that we all know has been a bit susceptible as of late. I just think they need to start converting this a little bit more elsewhere now. And I'm surprised that he's died three times, considering he's had yep. a lot of ward vision to play defensive for the most part. That's what I was thinking. I mean, you look at... I mean, it's four kills to three, so not all that much to look at in KDAs just yet, but... 
three of the four kills have been on vote. So, you know, that Ulur that started off finding some good lockdown, finding some good trays early in this game in the long lane for SSG has started to get mitigated by Obey. Now, well, where I mean, do your eyes... Go ahead. This is this is Athena. Sorry, this is Athena carry in this lane. Though you got to take that into account. Oh, this right. is all support no, right. <laughs> that we're seeing here. Like if you notice, you know, ever since um, the early game when we got that kill, I mean, Raph has been popping because of it. He's got a two level lead. You know, he's the carry of right. this lane. He's just a little bit more mobile. He's going to rotate around a bit more. You know. That's right. He will he will spread out the the lead that he was able to to gain in the long lane exactly. to other parts of the map and seem to have worked out. All three kills. Affected by Rapper so far, the Athena looking good so far for SSG. It is mid lane tier one tower. That's maybe the ire of SSG's eye. And Cherio, for really the first time this game, I was going to say has to use the ult defensively, but remains to be seen. Well, will rotate defense... just on over. Yeah, I will say that was a defensive ult that could have turned into an aggressive one, funny enough. Right. <laughs> but I did like that Choco Bay had there for a second. Cherio realized he was in a bit too dangerous of a territory trying to place that sentry ward. But look at this in the right lane, Dave. The gank attempt. That's for the totem of Ku. Nika is locked down by three members of Obey, but Rapper's oh here to gosh. save the day. And what a massive taunt from Rapper <laughs> to pull back Obey. Yeah, right on that gank, says SSG. They make their way beneath their tier one tower, and it's a gank that just will not be for Obey. I mean, Athena's all at the end of the day with the defender. Let's hold that for the look from Duffy. Nika's in trouble. Flicks him tossed around. The monkey toss will get the kill. There's no reinforcements coming, though, but Rapid does back away. And yeah, I was, I was about to say, like, I think the biggest key there is Defender of Olympus on Athena. So useful. It gives protections. Like, the mobility of a support, huge. But at the end of the day, Obey's still find another pick. They're doing okay here. A bit surprised right. to say. It does show how sloppy Space Station Gaming have been this year, though. They are not the SSG of last year. As in, the same members that were on that Renegades team, sure, minus right. Rope. But this isn't clean from them. This is a dirty, messy Space Station composition and team play so far. I don't know what it is, but they've got to step, up, step it up if they expect to go far in the league. I agree. And, and, and you look at a game one where I was spot on with my mid lane gank turning into a kill. In this game, I've been nothing but casters cursing time and time again. And eventually, that solo lane gank does result in a kill for Obey, but still a gold discrepancy. I think that's always important to look at. Yeah, you have two kills over SSG, but you're 3,000 gold behind. Ducky looking for something and ended up finding nothing and has to burn his blink for it. And when you mentioned that gold lead, just look at the net worth on that left-hand side, right? Look at all that red above blue. The only two really doing okay at the moment is Raijin, which is the big man that's been fed in mid on Wolfie, which is one of the game plans, funny enough, for Mobe is to get Wolfie into these sort of positions. And second on that list is actually weaken at the moment. He's actually a little bit ahead of that of Cherio with how this game's gone so far. It shows that that's where the majority of this gold is, but everybody else on Space Station doing a much better job than their counterparts. Agreed. And, and I wonder at what point or, or if there really is kind of a timer on Darda. As you look at the turnaround that Darda has had in game one, I'm not going to call it a bad start, but a slower start maybe from him. And then out of the gates, really roaring down the stretch there for SSG, helping him out. It seems like it's only a matter of time, and it's only because of what we've seen in the past. SSG find oh. themselves a massive fight, and it could start here with a taunt on inbound, but you will be able to oh. dash his way. Back to his mid laner. Cheria will dunk down onto Weaken, who does have that Fear No Evil. It's a drop ship to bring Wolfie back into the fight. Fear No Evil catches down onto Cheerio, who that will spin around, good. but there's a Discordia app already for Darda as a two man taunt pulls a couple back into Raffer there, and now he's caught out just a little bit by Ducky. Boat plugging away some good shots to pluck good onto Athena, but Nika hasn't been here this entire time. Wow, he finishes off here. the kill. Darda grabs his second. It's a few kills in this one for SSG, and it could get worse. Wolfie no more. Agus, a double kill for Dardes, a three-kill swing. <laughs> and Ducky knocks down vote. And the solo lane is coming to play right at the tail end there, just when you want him to. That's a field day for Nika there. Thanks very much. I'll hit a three-man ultimate and get, collect a couple of kills for myself, or at least assist in this situation. That whole fight started off of inbound, trying to ward the Fury got himself picked, had to jump back towards Red Buff, Cherio wanted to follow up, and when Cherio got to the sky, he went, well, there's a great little target in Woey there. That forced a fight that neither side were really happy about, if I'm honest, and it didn't work out yep. well at all. Weakened, though, 
great play from him now. I want to give him credit where he's due. He held the fear no evil for when Cherio was in range to hit two. Finds the kill, but the apple from Dardes lands on top of him, and that's the end of his yep. life in response. But that was a great play from both teams there that still overall is technically neutral, give or take. Sure, red buff stripped away. Maybe Obey, though, can answer back with this Fury. Just see how confident they're feeling. Wolfie did end up dying for the first time in this game, but added another kill to his repertoire here. Rapper has been pretty spot on with some of these taunts. That's some good rotation from Dardes as well. Obey secures the Oni oh. Fury, but a dunk from Cherio locks down Leave. a few members of Obey. Inbound tries to escape, but that ship is grounded. Vote trying to redeem himself after an early exit from the previous team fight will snag a kill. Obey Alliance, low health bars, ducky feared out. Nika gets the kill, the leap oh, from wow. Weekend, but the stun from Cherio could be a four-man fight, and it sure is. And this is the cost of the Gold Fury sometimes, right? Or doing fights around the Fury. Because that was a good example of Obey doing what they went there for, which was get the Fury. The problem was Space Station went in for the fight. They went for the cheeky steal, but as soon as the Fury's down, they engage and they run Obey all the way back to that tier two tower. One by one, they fall as their health bars just drop to the wayside. Like, there's not much they can do in that scenario other than turn tail. I think the difference here is that Obey even need to turn and go, all right, fight, which I don't think was the call, or run away quickly. Because a lot of the times there, it felt like Obey were trying to help each other out and it just put them all in a worse situation. Funny enough though, it's not punished as bad as I thought it might have been, because I did think a fire giant could have been on the table there, but at 17 yep. minutes in, I guess the respawns are just a, a little bit too low for that to really happen. Just too quick and maybe not enough damage for SSG, but uh, I don't imagine it will be long before they maybe turn their eyes there, but you kind of look at last game, it was really the last, last threat of hope that Obey had, maybe taking away a fire giant and they didn't even contest it in game number one. I don't know, Hindu. I mean, you look at 8 to 10, that doesn't really tell the whole story as we've been talking about throughout most of this game. It's a 5k gold differential. Game 1, Obey didn't even consider moving in towards that fire giant. Do you imagine they'll have a little bit more confidence here in game number 2, should SSG elect to start it up? I think the one thing that will not necessarily be in their minds as much is the gold discrepancy between the two at 5k. That's a K per player. But I do think they feel that like they could still scrap. So at this point, it's way too early for me for Space Station just to force an FG and come out on yep. top. I do think Obey are definitely still in this game at this point. With how their composition is and how well Wolf has done so far, he's the major threat on this team. And with where we now building into a little bit of crit here, there's a bit more potential from this roster. The problem being is that as these fights have happened, it's Obey looking at an objective where Space Station are looking for the fight and then following up with objectives and fruition through gold leads there more often than not. Agreed. And I will say, I, I've liked what I've seen. I mean, part of the time. Let me, let me make sure I get this phrasing correct. <laughs> I, I've liked the the ultimates maybe that I've seen out of inbound. I think the, the, the rotations from this Horus have been, been good. Now I think maybe oh. caught out once or twice, but could find some follow-up onto Dardes here. It's a lot burnt to try to get rid of the Discordia, but luckily he's still alive. the will save Dardes' life, and he somehow escapes. Cherio is here to save his mid laner. Nika, in the meantime, has found the second kill of this fight for SSG. Soon to be three members down for Obey, saving a, uh, a miracle escape from Ducky. But it's beneath oh, the no. Tier 2 tower where the fight continues on. Ducky taunted in. Rapper finishes off that kill, and it's a three for none for SSG. Great engage from Obey. Problem being, Dardes' relic usage was divine. The beads was great. The Aegis Perfect. was great. It absorbed so much damage that when you turn around and go, hey, how are you guys getting on over there? Nika is rolling Wolfie's face into the dirt with that Kukulun. And now Inbound's going to fall too. This could be over here. I mean, they could go for a Oh, this is easy. brutal. Brutal. Right. Deicide now for SSG. They found a couple of kills. The Deicide just to be refreshed by Weekend and Wolfie. And as you point out, Tier 2 Tower, maybe an overstay, I don't know what you call that for Obey. No, I don't think it was really an overstay, Dave. I think they, they were, thought they were safe enough under that Tier 2, like, well, they burnt everything. But I just don't think they really realized the amount of manpower Space Station still had. But right. not only that, how tanky their front line is at this stage. Level 18 on this Kukulun, he could talk for half a year on these Tower or Phoenix line, no problem. Like, not an issue from especially building to this Hide of the Urchin 2, that extra health, the extra protections from it really going to help yep. out some more on doing so. So they just didn't realize that scenario was the case that they were walking into there. The fight, you look back at the fight that happened though in the mid lane, the pick was on Dardes, they went for the play, 
Dardis' relic usage was just perfect. Like, I don't think yep. you could have asked for much more of those relics. They bought, bought full time and space, and they ran out of abilities. Obey just didn't have anything else to continue to pressure onto that Discordia, who did a great job of individually surviving, while the rest of the team, well, they, they wrecked the backline of Obey. SSG finally hit that stride. I was curious if and maybe when it would happen. They've gotten a 10,000 gold lead 21 minutes into this game. It's been in the, the low to mid thousands, but finally I, I think the doors have kind of been blown off of this yeah. one. And Obey are just trying to cling to, to some semblance of map control. Could go from bad to worse with SSG rotating over towards this gold fury. They can just two-man it and maybe with some help from Darda as Cheerio hanging just by the side in need of backup, but it will be Gold Fury to extend out the lead just a little bit further. And now you wonder if this lead is big enough for SSG to maybe start up the fire. I think they could definitely look that way. <clears throat> I think the funny thing is, is that people like, but is this Weekend's last game? I, he can't, this can't be his last game, Dave. You know why? There's no way he's going to give Rafa the privilege of tweeting BM at him <laughs> after this game. That's not going to happen. Weekend would have a field day with this. He can't. We, sorry, Rafa would have a great time doing that. It's not going to happen. Wolfie could be dead again. He is. Oof. Yeah, talk about a field day. It's Cheerio at 4, 2, and 7 <laughs> who's had a he field had a day not only in this game, but in this set. And that's 40-second-plus death timers on two members of Obey. Wowie, I think, smartly is just going to try to get some map control, some map pressure for Obey going. But that's a free fire giant paid with a little bit of interest by Obey to the tune of two kills. And this is a mirror of what we saw in game one. It took one little skirmish around the fire giant, a secured FG, and that was all she wrote. I think that's the, the, been the story of Obey's year so far, is those, uh, the casters and the viewers at home just going, I mean, yeah, they're improving, right? But they clearly are still off the pace the rest of the league at the moment. And the problem is, is that, you know, that's not going to get any easier. These teams are all no. going to work away and continue to grow. Like, sure, Obey might be able to close the gap, but it's, it's going to take a lot of work for these boys. And I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people thought about this roster at the start of the year. Individually, yep. the pieces are there. The problem is, is like, can the chemistry get there? Can the shot calling get there? If we can, your jungle's not going to be the shot caller. We've seen it before in the SPL. It could work. But you've really got to have those pieces alongside you. And I, I think it's unfair to look at Inbound and Wolfie, two guys that haven't really been in the SPL for a minute. I mean, Wolfie was out of the SPL right. all last year. And Inbound hasn't played in the SPL at this level being expected to step up into that shot caller role. They need support, and they need it fast. So Inbound might provide that as he blinks forward, weak in there to follow up as well. Cherio will Anvil of Dawn his way upward. And slam down for an engagement, and he has onto Weekend. Gets that Fear Two No ults. Evil out of the Obey Alliance jungler, and Wolfie uses the Tyco drums. A brilliant start to what could be a great fight for SSG as Inbound looked to knock some up and disengage. I like the idea from Obey to try and force a some sort of fight before that tier two, but as soon as you lose the, the ult from Humbats and the ult from Raijin, this just makes the next defense even harder. Keep an eye on Dada, has got the ultimate up. Raph is going to be the engage with the taunt. He pulls a couple in, but can you get the kills? Dardes, I think, says yes. He doesn't finish off Ducky just yet, but inbound catches enough of that Discordia damage. Vote is there to follow up. One member down, three members low live. for Obey. Left side Phoenix taken down. This could be the assault from SSG no. that ends the game, but instead they'll play it safe <laughs> and back off. I was, I was like, one more kill, and that is game. Yeah, if yep. Obey lose another member there, that would definitely have been a situation where Space Station could have ended. But I like this call to play it safe. The problem being is that they're actually hunting for a pick. And with Nika now all in back in, sorry, Rafa all in back in, the siege is going to continue soon. Inbound's still dead for another 10 seconds. They've not got minions, though, but I don't think they're really going to care with how tanky they are. Well, the, the ultimate scales continue to shift. The, the Fear No Evil and Tycho drums that were burned a moment ago just now coming up. SSG waiting on a few. Look out for inbound coming back from base. A great Fear No Evil. There's an opening engagement here for Obey, but is the follow up there? Dardes says no as nope. Weekend goes down. Wolfie getting plugged away. Cheerio finishes that one off. Wowie will get stunned, locked off. Hindu man, that's three kills, four kills, and the Titan. I think it'll eventually uh, fall. SSG have drawn this one out, but somehow that's an overstatement, and I think they take the win. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing there is right at the end, that fight in the middle lane, I think from Obey's point of view, they've got a really good engage off. They just don't have the yeah. damage to compete with how tanky that front line was. The ultimate hit multiple people. No health bars disappeared, though. They were all still pretty much at full. There was no way back into it at that point, but at nope. least they had the idea, you know? Rough times for Obey. Rough, rough times.
It's tough. I mean, that's back-to-back 25-minute games, especially in a day where we've seen a 50-minute game to start off. This entire set was what was one game in our first set of the day. But I feel like it's just the same story where Obey get themselves off to a decent start. Wolfie has three kills, zero deaths at one point, and they just can't convert it come mid-game, yeah. come late game in real- SSG. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think the real thing there, Dave, is that we, we're going to see the early game more from every team, so they're going to improve that quicker because you play more early games. When we get to the mid-game scenario, that's <laughs> yeah, where right. we're going to need to see the developments for Obey next is the mid-game. How do we fight as a unit? How do we fight as a team? And then we're still going to worry about freaking late game. So, you know, we'll see what happens <laughs> next time. Yeah, I know. Obey, they, they've got something to build on here and unfortunately catch a loss to SSG to round out our Friday of Smite action. That's been Dolson and Hindu Man on the call. We'll go back to the desk to round things out. Thank you, Dave and Hindu. Uh, a, a close but no cigar sort of situation for Obey, at least in terms of looking better than what they have previously. Game two does look better for a little bit, Right, Mifflin? I mean, they, they were in it. Look, game time, very similar, I know. But they had more competitive fights through the mid-game than they did in game one. They did have a few better fights. It, it's so hard to have an analyst desk about Obey not read like an obituary statement because these guys aren't looking good. Uh, Hindu broke it down perfectly. Their early game's getting better, but it doesn't really matter because everyone's early game's getting better. Their mid-game doesn't exist, so they need to develop that. And then afterward, late game? I don't think Obey's made it to late game yet. Uh, they're looking bad. They're getting better, but their their rate of improvement isn't enough to catch them up to the other teams. They're going to need to see some changes soon, and they are going to get some changes soon. Maybe they will get a lot better, but Weekend certainly isn't the beginning and ending of their Obey's issues. No, certainly not. But I think a fresh face will maybe breathe some fresh air to this team but that, that clearly seems to need it. Wolfie, 4-5, and five, certainly the best-looking KDA there. He was 3-0 and oh at one point, and then that big fight by Gold Fury ends up setting him pretty far behind where he takes his first death. But we'll, uh, I think Hin- uh, Hindu Man brings up a great point in that Wolfie is stuck to Raijin every time he can get him. Inbound has played nine different gods in ten different games, and I think that I agree with what Hindu Man's saying. That's hurting this team. Maybe, yes, inbound can play all of those gods, but they haven't found wins trying a whole bunch of different gods for him. Why not try and stick to one thing and, and master that before you try and move on? And that's part of the difficulty. Let's say inbound does decide to stick to one character and they finally start to see some success. What does Obey do when that one character gets banned out? You can't come into the league and start developing a style immediately. You have to kind of have something going for you from the offset so you can continue to expand and evolve from there. Right now, Obey's base point, they're starting so low off that, again, their rate of improvement can't match these other teams. I I love the members of Obey. Weekend's a fantastic streamer. Ducky, fantastic dude. I've competed against Inbound for a long time. They're all fantastic competitors. They're all great dudes and players. They just haven't seen success yet, and it breaks my heart. It's tough, man. You definitely feel for them and the members of the Obey community that are rooting for them. But it's a long season. You know, we're only four weeks in, and we'll see what these changes that are going to be upcoming. Again, if you missed the announcement, Weekend saying that he's going to be stepping down from the team. Whether that's effective next week is dependent on whether or not they find the suitable replacement in time. He may play for another week or two until they find the right fit for their squad. But there will be a change happening to this Obey Alliance roster. But let's look on the, the, the more positive side of the coin. Space Station have look a lot better today. And, and yes, it isn't against the defending world champions or something like that, but you can only beat who's in front of you. And, and PK, or SSG, excuse me, did that very well today. They did. I mean, it's hard not to say that every team doesn't look like the best team when they're playing against Obey. But I think we saw a lot of pieces come together. The SSG's team fight, although a little bit sloppy in the early game, they started to even it out. They they clearly know how to play with a lead. They did it two 25-minute-ish games. These guys have a lot of talent, and I think we can glean a lot of info from that interview from the pregame. If the trolling stops from SSG, if these guys really put their minds to the game, they can be that super team that everyone expected them to be preseason. Yeah, if everyone stops eating votes 
ice cream Pringles and, and donuts or whatever it was, then they're going to be just fine. We'll see if the main culprit will admit to it on the interview. We've got Cherio standing by. Well, I think with a throw like that, Cherio, the only place to start is who's eating votes food? Uh, no comment on that. I think <laughs> Cherio pleads the fifth, no comment from that. Uh, but but I want to kind of focus on game two specifically before I kind of take a high-level look. Wolfie off to a 3-0 start that game uh, on the Rygen. What's the team communication like there, and uh, how do you guys turn around what was, I won't call it rough, but a, a slower early game start from you guys? I'd say we weren't, like, 100% focused, like, on whether we would be getting picked here. We just assumed that, like, chill a bit, you know, we'd farm up and fight uh, gold or something. But, you know, once we're like, okay, after Dart is died, we're like, okay, let's focus up here. Like, not let none of them get a lead or a snowball or anything. And then right. we just knew that eventually we'd win the game anyways. And I think you had a, a fantastic set here today. A couple of Thor games, both of them looking great. Some good dunks, plenty of setup. But, but on a whole team level, obviously it's been maybe up and down from what you guys expected this, uh, this split to start off on. A good bounce back week for you guys after a tough set against Radiance to round out your your set last week. Do you think this SSG team is starting to hit your stride? Definitely not. I don't think we're at the point where at our peak or even close to our peak at all. Like, like I'm not trying to be uh, toxic or anything, but just the fact we beat no? Obey doesn't really mean much. Like we right. we lost to Radiance, kind of got stomped, and I think what's really going to show whether we're a good team or not is how we do against United and Rival the next few weeks. Losing to Radiance, it was bad, Absolutely. but like, you know, we can have bad games, but I think uh, what we can start picking it up and we'll see how we do against the other two teams. Well, I think the mindset is absolutely in the right place. Cherio, congrats on the big win here today. We will Thank see you. you in action against the United a couple days from now. So good luck then. That's all we've got for you here in this interview. We'll send it back to Agro to round us out. Thanks. Thanks, Dave and Cherry. Cherry, a smart man, understanding that the, the work is just getting started for the Space Station team and that he does not need to self-incriminate in the middle of the interview and invokes his Fifth Amendment rights very intelligently there. And with that win, Space Station does rise up in those standings a little bit closer to what we may have expected from them towards the beginning of the year. They are sitting at 3-2. and two. E United drops to 2-3 and three after their loss today to Sanguine. But everyone is looking up top right now radiance with the target on their back the only team with a zero in the loss column but that could change tomorrow they start off tomorrow up against team rival and this is going to be a great great matchup i cannot wait for that one pk renegades will also be taking place after that one tomorrow and then on sunday e united versus space station and pk versus sanguine but myth how can you not be excited about getting here early tomorrow 3 p.m start and getting ready for Radiant's rival. Well, you kind of gave me an impossible question. There's no way you're not excited for it. Radiant's versus rival is going to be an incredibly indicative match. Radiant's looking completely unbeatable going off of all their matches previously. We'll see if maybe rival can put an end to that reign at the top. I'm excited to see it. I'm going to be on the desk for it. I, I can't wait. Man, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you're here right on time tomorrow, 3 p.m., same channel as today from all of us here at high res thank you so much for watching remember be sure to be washing your hands keeping your hands away from your face don't ingest any sort of cleaners and you can peach it